What I'm gonna speak about in the video today is the most overlooked concept in cardiac arrest care. And everything I share with you today comes directly from ACLS and AHA. This is the material right here that's actually gonna help you save lives and actually gonna help you improve your cardiac arrest survival rates. Important video. Let's first talk about the cardiac arrest team. Now, I'm gonna give this to you with a flavor of EMS, working in EMS, understanding EMS, right? It's different than working in the hospital. It is a different atmosphere and environment. Now, the goal in cardiac arrest, the goal is to have a six person team. So I'm first gonna go over all this as if everything is perfect. We have all the appropriate team members at the appropriate level. And then we're gonna put a little twist on it. If What if we have limited resources? And we're gonna talk about that, EMS, okay? So here we go. So our goal is a six person team. Over here, we have what's called the resus triangle, okay? Over here. These are the members that are literally right on top of the patient, working the patient, compressing, managing the airway, the monitor. This is all right next to the patient. Over here, also near the patient, but not as close as these people, is the team leader, IVIO medications, and a timer and recorder. So let me explain each role. The compressor, that is a person providing chest compressions. Next, here we have his airway. That is the person managing the patient's airway. Now notice in our new update, something called the CPR coach and the monitor and defibrillator is blended into one person. So the person actually managing the monitor defibrillator, right, during those rhythm checks, shocking, not shocking, the person in charge of that, or in BLS, someone managing the AED, that person also is our CPR coach. Now, what does that mean? And why is this even here? The CPR coach, the goal of the CPR coach is to make sure that high quality BLS care is being done to the patient. Why? Because studies show that if we do early defib, if we do early high quality CPR, we get better outcomes with cardiac arrest. So the BLS care, which is all over here, right? This can be done with an AED. This is a BLS, can be a BLS airway. And this is compressed, actual compressions. That is the most important skills. This is why I harp to you in this channel to get really, really good at your BLS. It's the foundation, everything, everything we're gonna learn when we're a paramedic doing ALS stuff. This is why we have a CPR coach. The CPR coach is ensuring while we're working this cardiac arrest victim that we have quality compressions, we have quality ventilations, and we're not, big key here, big key put on the screen, we are not having massive interruptions in our CPR care. And we're limiting any sort of compression interruptions to less than 10 seconds, right? And I'm, about, I'm gonna have a ton of tips in this video on how to make your cardiac arrest team stronger and better. Now, the next thing over here on this side, we have the team leader, right? In EMS, obviously this would be a paramedic we hope is on scene. We're gonna talk about different scenarios here in a, set, in a little bit, okay? And how we can work all this out. This is what ACLS, AHA wants us to do, but what if we have limited resources? We're gonna talk about that, and I have some ideas for you. Again, working in EMS, I, I get this. IVIO medications, okay? This is someone who's gonna be setting up the IV or setting up the IO and giving all the medications, okay? And finally, is a timer recorder. So they're actually gonna be timing and recording the entire event and making sure that everything that we're doing is being recorded, okay? So here are our roles. Now, let's talk about different scenarios and what I would recommend based on what you have available. Okay, so we have a few different scenarios I wanna discuss. The first scenario is let's talk about practical EMS, what probably is going to happen in most areas. In most areas, you'll have an EMT and a paramedic riding around in the ambulance. That sounds pretty fair for a cardiac arrest. Then we're gonna have a fire department engine with should be at least four people on that engine, we hope. That brings us 
to our six person team. So here are some ideas I'll throw at you. Let's say in this scenario, we only have one paramedic and every other provider, the fire department brings you all EMTs and then your partner's an EMT. You're the only paramedic on scene. So let's talk about what everyone can do. Well, the time of recorder, that can be an EMT, right? We're just recording. That could be someone from the fire department. No, no issues, no problems. So I'm gonna take the role of paramedic. Like I'm in, gonna be in charge of this code. Well, by default, then I have to be the team leader. Fair, okay, that's fair, right? If I'm a team leader, well, I'm the only paramedic on scene. This is where EMS gets interesting. See where I'm going with this? Well, I have to be the one to do the IVIL, set it up and give the meds. And I might also wanna control my monitor and defibrillator and be a CPR coach. You see where I'm going with this? So the difference is EMS, if you're the only paramedic, then you have many hands to do all at once, right? So let's talk about what we can actually outsource, right? If we're all, of all EMTs, but then we're the only paramedic on scene. This also can be true in like, you know, volunteer departments or any department. If you're a, a fly car paramedic, and this has happened many times where you're a fly car paramedic, go to a call and it's all EMTs. This is, a, this is the exact situation. So the compressor of course can be a BOS EMT provider. And the airway can also, in the beginning, can be a EMT provider until we insert an advanced airway. But as we know, inserting an advanced airway comes later on down the line in the code. It's not, a, it's not a rush, but at some point you're gonna have to insert the, insert the airway. See where I'm going with this? So in this scenario, the paramedic really is a team leader, the I, doing the IVIO, and maybe even being the CPR coach. Now, a caveat with that that we could think about here, and I'm rolling this through with you, or again, this video is about making you better. Let's think this out. If the goal of AHA says a CPR coach is to perform high quality BLS, could the CPR coach role be outsourced to a high level, a senior, or even your partner, your EMT partner? Could it be? So even if they're working in the compressor airway role, couldn't you allow them to be the CPR coach to focus on the BLS while you're the team leader? But then you also gotta kinda be the monitor and defibrillator. I believe you could do that. And I'm curious your know, thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments, obviously, as well. I would love to hear from your thoughts on all these dynamics that AHA gives us. Now let's do a different scenario. Let's say that we have all the resource available that we need. We have unlimited paramedics, so we're completely good on whatever we're doing. Or maybe we have an advanced EMT to help, right? Let's talk about that. Let's say we have unlimited paramedics. What could we do? Well, a paramedic would be a team leader. A par then another paramedic would be IVIO. We can have an, uh, a senior EMT be a, a timer recorder. We have a paramedic could be the CPR coach in the modern defibrillator. We have uh, a paramedic on the airway once it's actually an advanced airway, but we can have two BLS providers, two EMTs here to start, right? So when we're looking at this, one, two, three, looking at really like three paramedics and then three EMTs would be kind of our perfect match, essentially, right? That'd be our perfect match, right? If I had three senior EMTs, and I had three senior paramedics, I'm looking really good. Now, the thing is, let's go back to our scenario. The ambulance crew. Is the ambulance crew both paramedics? They're probably an EMT and a paramedic. Okay, so we got one here, let's say one here. Okay, great. So now, is that fire engine that's responding, is that fire engine with the four people, let's say, for example, are two of them gonna be paramedics? Maybe we'll get lucky and, they'll, and they will be, right? What else could happen? Let's, well, let's just remove the fire department for a second. Let's just say, for example, the fire department doesn't respond. Let's just say they're, you have to go to fire arrest. It's just you and your partner. And let's say, for example, you have a fly car supervisor come in who's a paramedic. So now you're working a code with three people. Sound familiar? It could, it's possible that that could happen. What do we do? In that situation, we have a three person team. Two people are gonna be going back and forth with compressor and airway. And then everything else here 
is going to be in the hands of one of the paramedics on scene. The only thing I will remind you of, which is cool for EMS, that it's the greatest thing in the world, but something to consider, is that the life pack, okay, which is sitting right down there, has a function where you can click it, click on that on the life pack, and it will record the event going on. So that is something where if you have limited resources, if you're in a very rural area, limited resources, or there's no units available and you're working a code, you can use that to kind of be your timer recorder and have the life pack outsource to it. Not the best thing in the world, not perfect, but resourceful. These strategies will make your cardiac arrest care so much better. Let's go through them. So I call these highly effective strategies. So first is pre-charging the defibrillator 15 seconds before your two minute rhythm check. Now, obviously, we do our rhythm check, we do our pulse check, right? It's all happening at the same time. So while the defibrillator, let's say our life pack, for example, while our life pack is pre-charged, so it's moving around, getting ready to get charged up, at that point, it takes us two seconds. We can look at the monitor and go, Okay, that's VTAC or okay, that's VFib or asystole or PA or oh, we got ROSC or whatever it is. And we can also get a pulse real quick while that's going on, right? We haven't shocked yet. We're just charging up the monitor, okay? So this is the first two things. Why? Now, why are we doing that? But here's why. We want to limit interruptions in compressions. If you take away one thing from this video, on your next cardiac arrest and your next code, Keep in mind, make sure that your compressions are not interrupted for more than 10 seconds, because that is the number one most important thing, right? And this, we do these little, these little tips to ensure that. Another little tip I can give you is the compressor, the actual compressor, when you're about to, let's say, let's say we're gonna deliver a shock, okay? Three, two, one, shocking, right? And now here I am ready to, I'm hovering over the chest. I'm not actually touching the patient, but I'm hovering over the chest and I'm getting ready. And as soon as it delivers and then I get the, the, the command, boom, right back in the chest, right back in the chest, right? So compressor hovers over the chest during the shock, not touching the patient, but prepare to continue because the, what's the big goal? Don't interrupt compressions for more than 10 seconds. Hammer that drum, remember that. Down here as well, we have a few more things. So if we're intubating the patient or we're giving medications IVIO, Keep those compressions going. Again, we don't want to have any interruptions. And then the other thing we want to keep in mind is when we're switching compressors, we want to make that happen quick. And one thing that's not talked about enough, and I know it can be hard, I've been in situations, I understand, I get it. When a compressor gets tired, as a team leader, you have to say, look, the quality of your compressions you know, is, is going down. We have to make a switch. So we gotta be able to do that, right? And again, I know resources can be limited, but if we have enough hands on scene, use them. Now, how does AHA think? How do we come up with hands-only CPR, BLS, ACLS? This is the mindset of this, of this triangle that we have here, okay? So we have the public, the EMT, the paramedic as we go up. So essentially we have a layperson. BLS provider, ALS provider. We have hands-only CPR, 30 and two CPR, and then our six team approach that we've talked about in this video, right? And we can see as we go, as we get more training, and also as we have more people on scene that are trained, we can do more things. And we end up here at the top of the pyramid here at ACLS team, six team approach. So, the goal of all this, if we can teach the public about hands-only CPR, we can check that box of simply just shouting for help, right? Doing hands-only CPR, calling 911, and then somebody getting AED. That brings us all the way up to right to the part of the BLS, right at the edge of it. Just knowing that, how cool is that, right? Then maybe we now learn how to do our ventilations, right? Working our way up, we're in a BLS, okay? Learning a little more about emergencies. 
And then we have on the top of the pyramid, our six team approach through ACLS. So this is how AHA thinks about the approach with CPR. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 national registry practice test questions. Also include some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions and audio files when you are on the go. The video vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student. And my students use this whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go pass your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the video vault today. I'll see you there.